Hunters, before getting into this next episode, we want to thank you and our sponsors for supporting the Flushing and Dustin podcast. Keeping our dogs safe while hunting, training, or traveling from one location to another and helping them perform to the best of their ability is important to us. We keep a first aid kit from Gundog Outdoors in our trucks and carry one of on our hunt ready vests in the event our dogs obtain an injury while hunting. We also carry their water bottle to keep our dogs hydrated while in the field. To check out these products and other safety gear, head over to Gundog Outdoors at gundogoutdoors.com and use code RINGNEX to save 10%. We transport our dogs to the hunting and training fields in our G3 Dakota 283 kennels. These kennels are one solid piece of military grade material and now have the option to add a feature called Dakota Guard. This adds an antimicrobial protection to the kennels that is FDA and EPA approved and is proven highly effective against Salmonella, E. coli, and much more. Not only do they care about the safety of your dog, they also care about your dog's health. Dakota 283 also provides other specialized gear to ensure our dogs have enough water and food for a full day's hunt and to safely store and secure our gear in our vehicles. Check out Dakota 283 at dakota283.com and use code RNR10 at checkout to save 10%. To ensure our dogs are primed for the field and receiving the nutrition they need to work harder and to help maintain their joints, we feed you new dog food. We feel you can do the dog food provides our dogs year after year with the strength and endurance to perform at the best of their ability. Lastly, become a patron at patreon.com for exclusive giveaways and discounts. Again, thank you to everyone for helping us continue to bring you Flushman and Dustin episodes. Hi, hunters. Thank you for tuning into the Flushman and Dustin podcast brought to you by Nick and Tyler. The boys from Ringnecks and Retrievers. In this podcast, we will talk about guns, dogs, gear, and our successes and failures in the field through our combined 40 years of experience. We speak with hunters just like you from across the nation about their days in the field and the many memories they built with their friends and family. We are excited to have you listen. Now let's get to Flushing and Dustin. Welcome back, hunters, to another Flushman Dustin podcast. Today we have a special guest, Alex Langbell. He is the founder of Gundog Outdoors and a sponsor of Ringnecks and Retrievers Flushman Dustin podcast. We are excited to have him on. Alex, we're going to kick it off today. Uh, just give us a little bit about yourself um, and how you got started with Gundog Outdoors and how that came about. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, first of all, you can see I'm kind of in my uniform. I just got off work, so I, I my career, my 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 professional career is I'm a firefighter um, training captain been doing that for 20 25 years now so I'm near the end of my career with that so I needed a, a hobby <laughs> so I, I actually came up with uh, gun dog outdoors and, and it actually came up because uh, I've been in the hunting industry for about 20 years now and I started out as a hunting guide I did that for about 10 and then I got into pro staffs and next thing you know I started making hunting videos and and uh, ended up um producing two hunting television shows, The Foul Life and, and The Grind Waterfowl TV. So I kind of been in the business for a while now. And so uh, uh, one day I was just sitting in my blind and I came up with a product that, um, and it just basically keeps dogs from, from breaking. It was a, my quick release system and it's been on the market now for three years, but came up with that. And uh, it, it basically just, uh, I ended up patenting it and it teaches dogs not to break keeps them from breaking and it was just a, a really hit you know people were reaching out to me saying thank you this is something I needed um, you know just something that's really really good tool and so next thing you know that's how gun dog was born I again being a firefighter for 20 something plus years um, my whole focus has been safety and stuff like that my whole career and now I, I operate you know being a hunting guide for so long it's everything is about safety and and so this was just natural. I, I really realized that there's no, there's no companies really focused on the safety of hunting dogs. I mean, we're all focused on our own safety, um, go through hunter education for the kids and, and talk about ear protection and eye protection and, and, and good, nice, warm clothes when you're out hunting and stuff like that. But no, who's looking out for the, the dogs? And so that's what this kind of, my, my company is kind of um, born from is just, um, it's really focused on um, creating products that are um, designed to keep dogs safe and um, and keep them comfortable. You know, I, I came out with a, a field trauma kit, again, 20, 25 years, uh, firefighter. We've, uh, uh, we've had to use that a few times, Tyler and I both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's, you know, I hate to say that, seeing people use it, but at least it's, it, I mean, it's good, it's, it's there, that's what it's for. And so, um, 
I just came up with the kit and, it, and you can use it on humans because it's all the same stuff that I've used in the field as a EMT. And, and honestly, it's like, well, well, you're not a vet. Well, you don't need to be a vet when you're treating a wound. And that's the whole thing is you have just to understand um, how the wound care and what to do and controlling bleeding and stopping the bleeding and getting it to a vet that can go that take it to that next step. So that's kind of where my, you know, because I've hunting, had hunting dogs since I was 12, you know, over, over close to 40 years now, I kind of aged myself, but, you know, <laughs> have hunting dogs for that long, hunted for that long, I've seen all sorts of injuries. So just, you know, coming out with products, I came out with a water bottle that um, keeps dogs specifically designed for hunting dogs or, or working dogs for that matter. So anyway, that's kind of where I got the start of gun dog, you know, just, just really, it's a, a born out of a, a need. And so, I've just taken the next level and, and people love it. They love the, like I have top notch customer service. I really care about, you know, the dogs. And, and so people see that and it's just been a really, a really good um, adventure that we're kind of taking off right now. And in fact, I'm, I'm retiring a little bit early and I'm going to focus hundred percent on the company and uh, I'm excited for, got all sorts of stuff in, in the work. So it'll be fun. So you're the the first aid kit. That seems how long has that been out? Uh, the first aid kit I put it together last year. So it, I would say it's been out about about thirteen months. Yeah, 13 and I know months. like so we saw it come out, and I was like, you know, that's a huge thing, especially in the uplands, um, just because the dogs go through so much different types of cover throughout the day mm -hmm. you know they you get into a swampy area um you know you got sticks coming up you go through briars you got yep. uh barbed wire fences and that was seeing that come out was was awesome for us because when you look at a lot of like the upland hunting chat groups on facebook or uh forums you know everybody's like hey what do you got for uh first aid kit what should we put mm -hmm. in a first aid kit and yeah you know, everybody has what they want, but yours is, I mean, it's like all encompassing. It when you caters to everybody. Yeah. It really does. yeah. And it, yeah. I know you've enhanced it um, th through this year. I think you've added a couple of things to it. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't I know have. what I've, they were. Yeah, no, I've, I've done, I mean, you know, and that's the idea is you, you improve what you start out with. And this is all the, the, the basis of the aid kit was exactly what you would need to treat a wound. Like I said, I, I've been an EMT firefighter for, for 25 years. I've treated gunshot wounds, knife wounds, impalements, um, decap, you know, I've seen it all. And I've seen <laughs> Decapitations, you're going to say? <laughs> yeah, I have, unfortunately. <laughs> I have, I've seen, I've seen some stuff, guys. And so I've seen it in the field with dogs too. I've seen a dog go in hypothermia. I've seen a dog go in seizures. I've seen a dog take a stick to the chest twice. I've seen, I've seen ears get ripped open. So I've, I've and I've treated them, you know? So I put together basically a kit. That was just no nonsense. I know what it takes to do it. Um, and I, but I didn't want to, there's some kits out there so encompassing that you can't carry them out in the field. They're so big, you know, $200 later and you got a, basically a, a big, you just, it's too much. So this is yep. something you can put on your belt you can throw it in your vest. You can throw it, you know, in your your blind bag if you waterfowl hunter. Throw it in your truck, um, and it's just everything is is there. And it's um, and we put. I just added um, a, a skin stapler. There's a lot of demand for that. You got some guys like the the pig hunters, you know, the with the dogs um, that fight, the get and always getting gored and stuff like that. I um, so I, I added that to the kit, and so it's it's just a good all around kit, and I and it just doing so well because it, it's not just thrown together by someone who doesn't know what they're doing it's uh, again it's stuff that i've used in the field and i know it and it's all u.s made all parents all paramedics and emts throughout the throughout the u.s use this product so you know I, so I would say that uh you know me personally i was thinking the same way you just said you know i always took care of myself in the field but i never ever took a first aid kit. I was just figured out, oh, well, if he got hurt and, you know, I'd just go home or whatever. Well, yeah. you know, in South Dakota, when we were out there this past year, Diesel actually ripped his whole to toenail off and ended up never got a video of it. Of course, I wish I would have, uh, you weren't, I wasn't thinking of it, but uh, I used it right then and there, um, yeah. in South Dakota. So it's, it, it is, uh, you know, going back and thinking of the hunting and everything your dog's running through cattails and all that type of right? shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I won't leave home without it now. Actually, I just took it out of my truck um, 
this past weekend. I had it in there the whole time up until now. Yeah. yeah. So and it's cool of- because I, I got a, uh, a um, little guide, field guide in there, and it kind of goes over the signs and symptoms that you might get. Uh, you know, you might notice like hypothermia when a dog gets cold or water, you know, wild when they're hunting ducks and stuff like that, you know. So I put in stuff, I put in tweezers. I, it's just I'm constantly improving it, making it better. And uh, right now I think it's a solid, I mean, I, there's, this could be very easily carried on any, like if you, if I was to go to cover a fair or walk around with a bunch of people, I could easily carry this as a, a, a medical bag for helping, you know, civilians and people yep. and stuff, so. The one, the one thing that I really like about your products is not just the product itself, but just the design of how you have it for convenience, the design of it, the way it's yeah. put together. You know, yeah. for example, both of your water, bo- water bottle and the first aid kit, they have uh, straps on the back that you can attach to if you're wearing Molly. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the yeah. Upland Vest, um, specific Upland Vests that are newer, are now having Molly on them. So it's very mm-hmm. easy to attach the water bottle, the first aid kit to it. Yeah. You know, like you said, when you have the, um, you know, if you're in a duck blind, if you're have it in your truck somewhere, you know, you can button it to whatever you need it to. So it's easy to access. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's a feature that I think is is really nice you know and especially yeah. for the uplands because it's really hard to carry stuff unless it goes well with your yeah with the vest yeah. that you're wearing you know yeah yeah uh, so I, I like that you know and i would bring up your your water bottle too alex you know this is the first year i think it was your first year with that two tyler isn't it yep. um but it was our first year with that and we got so many compliments on that water bottle oh man your dog can drink crazy. out of that so easy i'm like well, <laughs> yeah. and i was like yeah your dog can drink out of it too just give me some of your water <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know it's it, it's so convenient man and that it's like you know we used to carry around a aquafina bottle or you know mm-hmm. a big gatorade squirt bottle or something and mm-hmm. you dump half it out half, half of it on, on the ground, ground you yeah. know and this is nice mm-hmm. you can put the water into the cup and then you tip it back you know if the dog doesn't want any more it drains yep. back in yeah um, you know yep. very well genius out. genius no, thank you thank you and yeah. and then we're uh and i love it and people love it absolutely love it and so do you, do you drink um, out of it yourself then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I've, I've cracked that lid I <laughs> but it's just it's just really nice and and we're um i'm actually designing right now it'll be out next season um a bigger bottle so it'll Sweet. be a, oh. a bigger hold of 20 to 24 ounces um so that you won't have nice. to carry an extra water bottle with you or because, you know, those dogs are working hard. And that's, a, that's something people tend to forget. Um, upland bird hunters, not so much, but the waterfowl hunters, um, you got to think about this. A dog is, is out there and he's, if he's by himself and you're on a good shoot and you, you, you know, you get 24, you know, 36 birds down, that dog is running full speed over. And if you're not, you're on a field and there's, you're not in water, they get, they can get, dehydrated really quick even if it's 30 degrees and and so if it, it it's a, a big it, it's been really nice to have them in the field um and that's important to keep dogs hydrated and to keep them fed too that's another thing that you know that's another part about the company is it's not only providing the products it's giving the education to folks you know on, on our social media pages and stuff like that is you try to educate folks on dehydration hypothermia you know i mean it's these, these dogs are athletes i mean you think about going out in the field running around for four hours and not drinking anything or eating anything how are you going to feel so that's you put you put yourself put your dog in you know in, in, put yourself in the dog's shoes um, and i, tr- I try not to drink anything all day because i'm driving constantly and i don't want to stop <laughs> 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 You're probably drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but you know, you know what I'm talking. About. It's just like yes, it's, it's, yes. you got to feed your dogs. Food is energy. It's warmth. If they get, and especially waterfowl hunters, you, you don't feed your dogs. I always, when I was young, I didn't think about it. But as I got older and realized and understood and see how it reacted and dogs reacted, their minds are sharper when they they're they're not hungry and they're not thirsty and so. Um, just very important and so that's why i'm really passionate because i i absolutely love love dogs they make everything in hunting so 
And just for our listeners, Alex, you just recently came out with that water bottle in an orange sheath. Is that what you'd call it? Yeah, right? for the Upland Bird Hunters, because yes. it's just uh, guys like that. You know, it's just something that um, I got the I got the uh, the, the OD um, green is what I call it, and brown. So that's for the waterfowl hunters, and then for the Upland Bird Hunters, um, I came up with uh, the just basically the the carry case that yep. you cl- either can clip onto your belt or or you can. Mm-hmm hang it you know it's got a carabiner that's attached to it you can hang it somewhere in your truck or whatever so um yeah that's you know something new that i came up with just to give options for guys who like walking around fields and chasing birds yeah i'm lazy i like i like to bring the birds to me <laughs> that's why i like to duck hunt, goose hunt. you sound like a firefighter <laughs> yeah, right. so I, I have the law enforcement background so we always went back and forth the firefighters yeah. you guys sitting at the station just you're sleeping and eating and then just waiting for a call while we're out there busting our ass. You guys are making it happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. You know, that you, you know, say that. I'm sure you, I'm sure you've heard the joke about what the cops and firefighters have in common, but they both want to be firefighters. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's funny. That's, that's pretty anyway. good. Oh man. So, yeah. It's, there's so many running jokes that you can't get, you can't get enough of them. Yeah, I got I got some great friends who are law enforcement, and I and I, I don't envy um, their job at all because they're just it's a thankless job this time oh, right yeah. now. Just like so people don't understand what they have to go through. In their no, it's terrible. It is horrible. It's sad. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's something else out there right now. But you know, mm-hmm. one thing that I that I really like about the that your update or making that water bottle bigger is I you know a lot of guys and I, we're kind of speaking from upland realm, you know, a lot of guys are running, you know, especially guys with pointers. It seems like a lot of guys are running two, three, you know, Correct. multiple dogs at once. Um, yeah. You know, and I ran into that this year is, I was like, oh man, if only this water bottle and even Nick with just one dog, you know, if you only have yeah. one water bottle and it's, yeah. you know, the season and you think, yeah, it starts in October, you know, you're like, God, oh, you think it'd be, cool enough but there's days that's it's still getting in the 60s you know in in november that the dogs i mean if you think about it if they're thirsty their tongues are just dragging they're not sniffing anything anyways right so having that nice break of and having that water bottle out in the middle of the field you know you can sit there catch your breath you know for Mm -hmm. five minutes or so let the dog feel back up on water and yeah maybe that maybe that bigger bottle will Balance you out, Tyler. You can fucking hit something this year. <laughs> well, I, I'll have to see which way I'm shooting, so I put it on that side of the vest. <laughs> so it's like, eh. yeah, no shit. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So you, you obviously you're going to be going pretty much full time with Gun Dog Outdoors in mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. a few short months. So congrats yep. on that. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Your retirement coming. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep in your service obviously for that many years but uh you, you got to have a a future and if you don't want to go into too much detail you know yet because it's may not be want it to be known but what's yeah. what's gun dog outdoors look like after your retirement and when you go full-time with it you know it's just it's just focused on um, first of all it's about the dogs and customer service that is that is my priority. Um, I've been in this business for close to 20 years. I've, I've represented multiple major companies, um, everything from Avery to Greenhead Gear to Rig 'em Right. I mean, I can just go on and on about the companies I've prostat for. But, um, and I've seen um, some really good companies fail because of lack of customer service. So my priority is gonna be obviously the dogs, um, product and stuff like that. Um, incredible incredible customer service because that's what i like it's hard to earn money and especially these days and and to waste money on garbage or not get the the service it's like you're going to get you're going to get service from me for my company and so the the vision is basically create products that's just people are loving like the like i've got three products that no one else really has out there that is specifically designed for hunting dogs and i got i've got a dog vest that's in a prototype right now it's being manufactured right now it's going to be it's going to be the best best dog vest in the market and upland down, upland I, vest or is this um, you can use it for upland absolutely it's going to have a yeah. protective shell kevlar 
um, or ballistic nylon to protect from sticks and Ooh. and um, yeah, it's going to be full on. It's a it's a it's it's going to be a pretty badass. Yeah, and so that's dude, that you know, but we like got it. Yeah, you know, I got some great ideas. Um, and we just got to make sure we get all the kinks worked out, field tested and stuff like that, and then come out with things that you know other things. I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, to compete, um, not necessarily um, with anyone else. I just the best way is just come up products. I'm I'm not I'm original. I, I try to come up with my own products. I don't try to come up with products that other people have, like the like the again the water bottle, the, the quick release system that keeps dogs from breaking. Um, you know, just I, I try to come up with ideas that that other and I've got some phenomenal ideas that I, I'm, I'm really not going to share. With you, guys <laughs> so, you never know who's listening, you know, that's right. But, you um, never do. You never do. That's right. And so uh, when you when you do see the product coming out, and you're like, ah, that's a great <laughs> idea. So but there's some I got some like I said, I just I got some really good stuff planned um, and we're just going to grow and we're going to have fun and uh, probably get back into filming again a little bit. Um, start doing some. I don't know about making TV show, but who knows, you know, Gundog gets big enough to where we might have our own TV show someday. You know, I have the background the experience to do it. I, I know how to um, work with the networks and, and you just, you just never know, but I just, you know, do being you able to. Envision Gundog Outdoors kind of taking on two heads, if you will, one kind of for the Upland crew and then another for the waterfall crew. Or I guess, how does that like look uh, I, in the know, future? I, yeah, I, I really want to do both because there are plenty of dogs that do both. And so, um, and there's, there's some passionate, passionate waterfowlers out there. And, you know, that's another thing we think about. Yeah, you have the waterfowl and you have the upland, but there's a ton of dogs out there that bear hunt and, and cat hunt. There's a ton of dogs out there that pig hunt. And there's a ton of dogs out there who are canine dogs who work to, you know, the, the protect their, so it's not as much as I want to stay in that lane, don't expect, like I've just put together a, a kit for a canine officer and it's, it's yeah, a tactical that. kit. And yeah. So it's, you know, black and it's got to, it's going to have a couple other things, but you know, don't look at, don't think Gundog won't go into that realm as well, because these are law enforcement who are, they're laying their lives on the line and the dogs are, and so the handlers are as well. Yes. Obviously. Yes. And so, by doing that, and I, I sent a care package, and this is a really great story. A, a, a gal reached out to me, and actually, um, pretty pretty well known gal. Um, her name's Laura uh, Zera, and she was on uh, Naked and Afraid. She was like a badass little. <laughs> she just killed it, right? And so, anyway, we became friends on social media. And her her friends. Um, boyfriend is uh the special forces overseas and he's a dog handler and stuff like that and so anyway i put a, a, a really good care package together for the dogs and the dog handlers and stuff and, and sent it over there and, and they actually used it they, um they, i just got an email the other day and i had to leave a lot of details out but the dog was um overseas um they were running with the handler and a pack of wild dogs attacked both of them and the dog this uh Malinois fought off seven dogs, protected the handler. The handler had to carry it back, right? Yeah, the dog was all messed up, but it turns out they flew it out, got rabies shot, gave it IVs, took care of it, and uh, everything worked out well, and the dog's going to go back into service and finish the deployment with them. But that's just the stuff that, Holy you know, if, if you got, yeah, right? So if you have that, I mean, I just want to limit to just water fowl and upland bird i want to i want to go kind of the big picture as it's well. all working dogs it's all working dogs exactly because dogs to me are so special they're so underrated for things that they're they do they've been with us for you know thousands yeah. of years as nowadays time. they're they're better than people so right? exactly <laughs> i like dogs i like some people <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so no i i you know and I, I again it's growth and of course our, my mainstay is going to be waterfowl and, and upland bird because that's it and you're going to actually see a, probably a lot more because of where i'm moving in eastern montana i will be doing a lot more of the upland bird hunting um you know the uh, the grouse and sharp tails and the and the, the pheasants and then the huns and all that fun stuff so yeah you're going to start seeing that and then a lot of it is just me being spoiled and going, hey, I want that. Let's design that. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and of course, anything that I listen to when you, you guys have ideas or, or you know, uh, other people I know come up with ideas. I'm all, I'm all I just, here. I just had an idea. We'll, uh, we'll come up to Montana and hunt with you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I expect it. <laughs> I expect it. Yeah. So. 
no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, you know, you, you, you talk about customer service and I, I think that's huge. It's, you know, it, sometimes, like you said, it's lacking in other companies and whatnot. And I know one thing that you guys do very well, um, is with your first aid kit. And I don't remember the exact details, so maybe you can say it, but if someone uses something in the first yeah. aid kit, yeah. they can mm -hmm. be replaced or how does Absolutely. exactly yep. does that work? If you use anything in the first aid kit and you document it and, and even just share it on social media or, or send it to me to share or whatever, um, I'll replace whatever you use for free. Yeah, that's just the way it is. It's just like, you whatever you use, I got your back. And so, yeah. you know, awesome. of course I want a little bit of promotion so we can help spread the word of having, cause it's so important to have a first aid kit, but it just really is. People don't yeah. even think about that stuff, but now I don't leave anywhere. There's always one in my truck. I go, I went on an elk hunt this last year. I packed my, I grabbed one of the, the first aid kits, you know, took yeah. out and I just threw it in the bag and, and we had it and we actually used it. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> one of the guys hurt, ended up hurting himself and we used the first aid kit. So it's just, it's just a, it's, it feels good to be able to have a product that, that where you get emails on a regular basis thanking you for your ideas and what you've come up with. It's just like, you know, I've, I've been in the fire service for a long time and I, I get thanks all the time for the things that I've, I've done and, or do. And, and to hit, continue this with the, the products, my ideas, is, it's really gratifying to me. So I just love it. So a lot of passion, you can see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Passion drives success, right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, if I can, if I can hunt now and just uh, have a good time and hunt for the rest of my my life, and okay. you know, make a little pay for a little bit of whatever. <laughs> think <laughs> of all the <laughs> think of all the ideas you'll come up with now that you're going to have all that free time, right? man. Alex, what uh, what are you? You said you had dogs, right? What do you mm -hmm. What are you running? I have. I you know I don't. I try not to have a whole flock of dogs or a whole herd of dogs. Um, I, I, you know, th I just don't. I, I normally have one dog and it's, I focused everything on. Right now I have a lab. I've had um, labs and chessies. I've had springers. Um, so I've had all three of those. Uh, I, I think they're all great dogs. They all have their, they all, any, I think any dog that works is a great dog. Um, but uh, yeah, right now I'm running a, a little lab. She's uh, four years old. She's the face of my company. Um, I just wrote an article for Wildfowl Magazine and she's all over it. So um, it's pretty cool. Pretty good stuff. You think so, uh, moving out to Montana, you'll stick with the labs or what is, what's your thoughts? You know, I, I thought about that. Um, I thought about Chessies. I thought about possibly getting an Upland um, dog, um, something like that. You know, I've, I, I know friends have had um, German short hairs, um, pretty high strung for me. <laughs> um, they are high um, strung. And, uh, yeah, they are. And, uh, but they're great dogs for what, you know, if you're up on bird hunter, you need a dog that runs for four hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, you know, I, I get that. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll kind of play it by ear. Um, and I do, I do do a lot of, um, I will do a lot more traveling. I'm doing show trade shows and um, stuff like that once I retire. And so, you know, I, I can't have a farm. I can't have a bunch of horses and chickens and stuff like that. I got to worry about, you know, the, myself and my dog. I can throw my a dog in a truck and, you know, and all of a sudden you have two dogs that that's a little bit harder or three dogs, a little bit harder. So that's kind of why I'm, a, I've always been kind of a, a, a one dog guy, not that, in a, but I'm not a breeder. I'm not a, a trainer. Although I've trained my dog since I was 12. So I, I know what I'm doing, but I just never gone that aspect of it i've always been like i said the hunting guy did that for almost a decade and then and then got into um filmmaking and tv making so that's kind of been my my lane how long how long were you in the filmmaking business oh shoot um well i did four let's videos. just make sure this is correct <laughs> the filmmaking business of hunting videos <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the hunting films. I did, um, I actually, <laughs> Sorry. I actually did the, well, my first uh, video that I made is called "Rest When You're Dead," and it was uh, Fred Zink actually um, helped uh, uh, distribute it and uh, re reproduce it and market it. And then, but it was uh, back in 2005. I made that, and then. Uh, I made four videos after that. I was approached to do a TV show 
the foul life. I did that for three seasons. Uh, after that, I um, left that show and then I got approached by another, by Righam Wright and Dakota Decoys. They asked me to do the grind waterfowl TV. So I, I did that for three years. And if you ever want to like to stop hunting and not enjoy hunting, start a TV show. <laughs> yeah. <How> old- <laughs> I'll tell you uh, that people hated it because I wouldn't let them shoot when, it, when it's too, not enough light and you can't shoot birds that are off film and you, you can't, you just, you can't shoot a bird going away. There's just so many rules and it's just, it can be um, not as fun when yeah. you're being told. Um, and it's, it's a lot of stress too. I mean, especially waterfowl because it's, it just you, this you got to hide cameras you got to hide all the guys it's just tough it just really is one of the toughest things to do is film waterfowl and get good waterfowl footage i mean you can film from a long distance but to actually get close up with the birds and that was always my deal i really wanted color i wanted close up with the birds so and i yeah. learned a lot of tricks from fred zinc and and uh, his camera guys and field hud and all and stuff like that so um but yeah we got pretty darn good at it like i said we uh um, did that for three years. And then finally, uh, my work, um, they promoted me to a, a day position, which is the kiss of death. If you're a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I actually work from an office, which I'm in right now. Um, so, um, yeah, I had to kind of give up the traveling because when you work shift work, um, you can take off two weeks at a time and go on a road trip somewhere. But with this job, I just, you can. So I had to, yeah. I had to give this, that up. And I just been, that's how gun dog started. I had time on my hands and, and then I just uh, came up with that product and designed it and developed it. And, and now look where I'm, you know, it's nice because I'm actually working for myself now. When you're, when you're filming and you're building TV, you're usually working for someone else and, yep. you, you know, doing their vision and stuff like that. But with, with this, it's, it's, this is all mine. It's, I'm myself and, you know, I, I'm a sole owner of it with my, my wife and, um, and it's just, like I said, doing really well, you know. Nice. Yeah. Does she have any good ideas for you? <laughs> she does the tax, <laughs> so, I so, so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> she takes care of the books. <laughs> that's right. She does all the stuff that's boring. So yeah. <laughs> I got to send her on a trip every once in a while, like why or something. But <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep her happy. Exactly. Yeah, she probably always comes to you and says, "Well, we need to spend uh, some of this money on something, so uh, we we'll don't have to pay yeah. in." So. Where are you well, going to send me now? <laughs> actually, no, it's quite the opposite. She's like, you got to quit spending money on all these decoys and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, gun dog's paying for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so anyway. did, did that, uh, you know, when you were filming and stuff, did that really take away from you hunting? Yeah, you, you know, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it actually, um, it did hit it made it to where it wasn't fun. In fact, the year I left the grind, the sixth season of film and waterfowl. And I, and when I say filming, I mean, I had four camera men working for me. I was a producer. So I did, I ran the camera guys. I did all the editing. I did the post-production and the graphics music. I worked with the networks. I did, I was a one man show. I did everything except for film. I, I was in front of the camera. I directed it. So I did a lot. So that just wore on you. And it was just a lot of pressure. You know, when you have, when you have sponsors are putting hundreds of thousands of dollars down on your production and you getting it done because there's timelines and television and, and it's, there's a lot of pressure. And, and then, and then again, you're at the mercy of mother nature and, and the birds and you go, you spend drop five grand on a hunt, you know, to go to, to wherever we'll say Idaho or wherever South Dakota and, and you don't get your hunts because it's too warm or the birds are too cold and the birds moved out or you just didn't get good film or whoever was hosting you was full of, you know what, because they don't understand. Um, and it makes it really stressful. So um, when you see these good waterfowl shows on TV, you know, really appreciate what they're trying to do because it's not easy at all. I mean, it's easy to stand back at 100 yards and film little dots coming in, but if you if you truly want to get good footage where you're seeing the color of the birds and and that was always my goal is to see get a you know fill up a frame camera frame full full of a bird or two, a couple of birds and and so it, we had some pretty good stuff on our on our on our show so yeah you would never you would never think about that I mean, just me, just, no. I, like if you would say, oh, I was filming a 
a duck hunt, you know, to go on TV, I'd be like, oh, well, shit, you just go up to Canada and you see a thousand yeah. birds come in, yeah. Uh, yeah. go go at it. But clearly, yeah. it's it's much more difficult than that. Just to, yeah, it, yeah. And have you the talk right about shots Canada. and angles and yeah, it is and very difficult. And you talk about Canada and you know, and that was a, a saving. Like you, we'd go up there like the beginning of the season and get I get you know three good episodes there because you have the ability because you have so many options. You know, you can shoot eighteen birds up there. You you can stack you can stack them up so you can get episodes even if you had a bad day, which was rare. It's early in the season, so the birds aren't as sk- skittish. But but no one wants to watch. A, whole, a you know entire TV show of just Canada hunting. They want to see small water in uh, you know over you know in creeks and stuff like that. They want to see timber hunting. They want to see all the different stuff. And so yep. that's what we kind of um, we had to do. So I'd been we'd go start in Canada. Usually get a couple episodes up there, but then we just start planning a trip. And and that's a hard thing. It's like you want to hit these places when they're in the prime, but you can't. You can't be at because. The prime for almost every place in the country is December. I don't know why. It's just like, when's the best time to hunt? It's just like, it seems like it's in December. When to come hunt in December. But, and I know this, granted, you know, you go all over and January is good and November can be good, but but it's just hard to plan that and, and make sure you're getting all the good hunts because, uh, like I said, you're in, you're in control of Mother Nature. I mean, she, she, whatever she throws at you, that's what you have to deal with, so... You know, we we managed to always get good footage and always get our stuff, yeah. but that wasn't from lack of, of trying. We we busted our ass sometimes, you know, trying to get all the stuff. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we we kind of got into just doing a little bit, nothing on that level, not even close to that, you know, but just running like GoPros and yeah. I mean, even that's just like there was times where I'm like, this is dumb. Why are we trying to film this? You're more worried about trying to have your GoPro on than. You know, yeah, just being I'm, out there and enjoying it. I'm a complete yeah. ship shit bag when it comes to turning <laughs> my fucking GoPro on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think I get it every I'm time about it. I'm horrible. You know, as much having, experience as I have. <laughs> yeah. Having a nice <laughs> camera, you know, and taking good pictures is is one thing, but man, when you talk about trying to get video, it's like stuff just happens, you know, and it's yeah. like I wasn't ready for that. You know, yeah. it's yeah but it's something else yeah cool so, hell, sometimes i forget to even load my gun when i'm going out to the field much less, uh, <laughs> oh, turn that happens a lot on. more in the blind <laughs> 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 you know it's uh, a good hunt if you're forgetting to load your gun <laughs> yeah it means you're getting some good shit or a bad hunt <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or you're so bored oh that's awesome yeah, yeah. good deal so <laughs> But Alex, why don't you give us a couple of your favorite hunting stories? Anything you want. I don't care if it's big game, if it's duck, goose, pheasant, whatever. You just you give us a couple of your best stories. Oh man, oh, man. there's so many. No holds bar either. I don't care what it is. So, um, I got I got one story that. Uh, know how good it is but i can remember the ones that stick out like that i took my daughter to turkey hunting in kansas she never been turkey hunting and uh we went out there and we got out there in the, in in the dark and i'm not from kansas so uh, i was kind of like pointing in that direction and anyway we get out there and i'm used to big trees like you know pine trees and stuff like that and and in kansas they're not not real big trees i mean they're you know they're just they're not and so anyway we get out in this field and i'm thinking we're walking out in the middle of this field thinking oh we're gonna get out and and uh next thing i know i look up and there's the damn turkeys and they're like not even like 15 15 yards up in the tree it's like right there i mean it's just kind of pretty crazy and so anyway we snuck in there they didn't bust us got in there and uh my daughter never shot a turkey and and anyway we managed to call in two turkeys and then and i prompted her prior i said if two come in you're gonna shoot i'm gonna go one two three shoot and and so anyway sure here they come in two of them they started kicking the decoys butt because we had a strutter out there and we're semi strutter and 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 so here it's time moment of truth and i'm like okay ready one two three shoot boom and then i shoot and and she didn't shoot and i'm like and I'm freaking out because it's like, this is our first turkey and I just shot first, you know, <laughs> the same time. and then anyway, next thing I know, she's like, 
and I'm having a panic attack and the bird's still there. And then, and then she ends up shooting and dropping it. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm excited, but I'm like freaked out. And so I'm like, what happened? Why didn't you shoot? And she's all, um, your bird jumped and it scared me and <laughs> I didn't shoot. And so anyway, it worked out good. And so that was pretty fun. We, she ended up getting two beautiful birds and then one was a Rio and the, the other one was um, um, Eastern. It was just, it was crazy to shoot two different birds in the nice. same and you know, yeah, it's her that, first turkey. That, that reminds me of a story. Um, we used to back in the day go to pheasant farms all the time, preserves, um, with my my cousin and my uncle. And my cousin was I don't know, he was probably thirteen, fourteen. Dude couldn't hit shit. So anyway, we're going, and I could always see like when my dog at the time was uh, Jackson was his name was getting on a bird, and I was like, hey. He's birdie. A bird's probably going to pop up. Obviously, we know where they're there. They're planted, right? Well, <laughs> my uncle would wait for his son to shoot and then shoot at the same time and say that he got the fucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good shot. Uh, and I looked at him like, no, he, he did not get that. We saw, and, then his, and then his son was like, did you shoot? No, I didn't shoot. No, I didn't shoot. No, you. I didn't shoot nothing. It's your bird. Oh yeah, <laughs> true story. <laughs> I don't know if my cousin still knows that to this day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> and just so just so everybody knows, I do that for Tyler in the field too. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> yeah. So there's just too many stories out there that yeah. Just too many, too many fun stories. Um, Do you have one before we before we end? A, a good dog story a, a behind good, good dog outdoors. Something that. Um. Let me think. I'm trying to think of something that. Um, just a just dogs that are just like incredible, incredible performances. I mean, I took Ellie. She was a year old. I took her to hunt uh, the Klamath Basin and we we're going after snow geese and specks. And the limit is literally like, it was a 10 specks and 20 snows. Well, and we're hunting water, cold water. It's, this is January. We're talking, you know, below between 20 and 30 degrees. And I uh, took her out there and she had, had a good season underneath her, but um, only one season. Ended up taking her out there and on, the first day in the water she retrieved over a hundred birds in the water that one <laughs> oh yeah we shot we shot uh, yeah we shot um like a hundred and there, there's a bunch of us we shot like a hundred and it was one dog and so she retrieved yeah and, and water tree and so ever since then it was just well the guide wants to breed <laughs> yeah I, I can see why he contacted me he wants to breed his dog with her because she's just a she's just a machine and Man. so yeah after that performance i she can she can sleep in my bed yeah <laughs> that is... did you did you make your wife have a similar performance to sleep in your bed <laughs> <laughs> my wife out. <laughs> how many, hey babe, how many birds can you retrieve, and yeah, then you'll that'll right. decide if you can sleep with the bed. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's yeah, funny. so, but no, she's she's a pretty awesome dog. So. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that sounds so, like it. That's awesome. Yeah, so a lot of good things. A lot of good. I got a lot. She's only four, so we got we got a lot of time left. You know? Oh yeah. Yep, my lab just turned. He's six. It'll be seven uh, in August. So he's still running strong. He's still yeah. moving. Yep. Take care. Oh yeah. Yep. Always. Yep. It's awesome. So well, Alex, we appreciate you coming on, talking about Gun Dog Outdoors, giving us some you stories. Bet. We're super excited for to see where the company goes, the products that you're going to come out with. We're obviously. Perfect definitely going to test those out um yep. again congrats on your retirement and your years yes. of service we definitely appreciate that and i'm sure a lot of other people do as well um and thank you for sponsoring us and helping us out as well we greatly appreciate that as well yeah yep. you bet guys you guys are first class and i appreciate you guys and, and we're on the same mission that's just to educate and 
and you know teach the the new generation you know the things that we had to learn ourselves and yep. and, and and make them better because we're we're quickly losing our our sport you know i mean with all the yes. antis out there and stuff and we can't fight amongst each other we have to work together and yes we do. we're not gonna have fight hunting anymore and I, I want my grandchildren to to enjoy what i i've been fortunate enough to enjoy so yes yeah, for sure 100 percent agree so awesome all right all right well, guys well you thank you night. yes thank yes. you and uh well i'll let you know when i'm in montana and you guys bring your bring your dogs and, <laughs> yep. and your shotguns and <laughs> We'll do that. Shells. We'll do that. It'll be, it'll be fun. So yeah, cool. awesome. All, All right. right, guys. Thanks, Alex. See you later. Have a great night. Okay, see you. Too. Bye. Bye.